Oh, I was getting red. All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for May 16th, 2022, 6.30 p.m. here at the Shelter House. Good evening, council, our audience, citizens, and administration. Ms. Burner, if you would call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Rodewald. Here. Seven members present. All right, thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Mr. Cook. Well, please bow your heads. Our Heavenly Father, please guide us as we attempt to do this business for the citizens of this great city. Please protect our first responders, our firefighters, our EMTs, our deputies, our personnel over and across the seas that are protecting this great country. And with that, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Action on the regular scheduled council meeting minutes for uh, 5 2 22. So moved. Second. Second, Ms. Graham? Yes. Okay. Any discussion, council? And when you're ready. All right, Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? I'm staying. Can you state your reason? Wasn't here. Thank you. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. <clears throat> Minutes accepted, 601. All right, thank you very much. Now we'll drop down to the city manager's report. Good evening, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we'll start with our police report. Uh, reported, or this is presented by our Clark County Sheriff Deputy. We got Deputy Major Sack today. Hi, right, thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, members of the uh, council, members of the city administration, members of the public. Uh, the, the sheriff's office uh, had uh, 5,228 miles patrolled in the city for the month of April. We took 215 calls. We produced 38 reports, 37 assists. We had 19 criminal arrests, six felony arrests, and six misdemeanor arrests. And you missed it. We also had seven warrants along with that. We had 73 traffic stops. 46 of those were warnings. 27 were moving citations, and we conducted 695 business checks. We investigated three traffic crashes for the month. And that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments for Deputy Major Sack? Yeah, well, Mr. Roadwell. Uh, just just for the, you know, so we're clear on the record, the, uh, the criminal arrest was 19 on the sheet. It says 1,919. Right, I, 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 I guess I crossed it out of mine. I wasn't going to say 19, no, no, 19. No. I just wanted, you know. I think it was a typo. Yo, absolutely. I, I'm not okay. sure. Okay. There's an influx. Just want to, you know. Happened that, that, that way we don't get a oh, yeah, blasted on Facebook yeah. about the crime rates going up. It's uh, not even 4th of July. Yeah. 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 My <laughs> Lord, that's a jump in a month. So. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. That deputy that's always sitting the other side of Meadowview, is that a city deputy or not? The other side of Meadowview. Moody. Is that the Bethel deputy? No, it's, um, I forget his name. Just south of Meadowview? Yeah. In the old, uh, I don't know what he used to be. He's probably be Bethel. By the nursery? Just past it. Yeah, that, that could be one of our city deputies. It could be a city deputy or a county deputy. I usually see McDuffie, which is ours. Is he on the cemetery side of the road? No. Okay. The building looks like it used to be a garage or a car lot. Gotcha. Okay. Why is he sitting outside the city? Because well, the city's other... right across the street. He's watching the traffic across. That. That's ours across the True. street from there. Mm -hmm. Never mind. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much for the report, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Deputy Major Sack. And moving on with the city manager report, our fire and, F fire and EMS report with Fire Chief Steve Trusty. Mayor, Council, citizens. For the month of April, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 65 EMS calls in the city, 10 in Elizabeth. 
Township. The division responded to five fire-related calls in the city and two in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Township about the park due to medic 52 being on response. We answered four mutual aid calls to Pike Township and four mutual aid calls to Belton Park. Uh, we are starting back our business inspection program. It was uh, canceled during COVID due to the state fire marshal's office. Um, putting a man place to hold on everything during COVID. So we have started that back up. We will be trying to inspect each business at least once a year. And all new items. Council, any comments or questions for the chief? Thank you very much, Chief. We appreciate it. Keep up the good work, sir. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on to City Manager Report, our planning and zoning report with uh, Planning Director, Mr. Hutchinson. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so tonight, uh, my report has, has our code violation summary report. It just shows you all the violations, types of violations that our code compliance officer is writing up this month or this past month. Um, you will see numbers rise, obviously, with the grass rises, so does the, the numbers of complaints and numbers of violations. Uh, our crews are have begun mowing nuisance properties, so uh, they will continue as well pretty much every, every week, multiple days a week. Um, code activity, uh, you see the numbers there uh, as well. That just continues, will continue to rise through the spring and the summer. Uh, a lot of times when they when we get those grass cut, sometimes we find things that was hidden in the grass that we got to ride up or people doing spring cleaning. So numbers always increase in the spring and the summer. Zoning year to date, uh, at this time we was 45, uh, received that zoning applications. We're about to 50 uh, since this last week. Uh, we've had four Board of Zoning Appeal cases this year. Uh, we have nothing submitted currently. Uh, we've had five planning board cases submitted this year. Uh, the next one, next planning board meeting is tomorrow night. Um, I think there's something on there that most people will be interested in, I think. Um, the agenda for uh, preliminary plat for residential subdivision located in Miami Bethel Township, uh, applicants DDC. So that's tomorrow night here, planning board, 6 o'clock. Economic community development, uh, residential development, just some updates on our residential development. Um, we have DDC, obviously that was the one that will be here uh, tomorrow night with preliminary plat uh, for planning board. Uh, I also had in here uh, about the notes that there was a joint Miami uh, County Bethel Township meeting. Uh, first, we want to uh, commend you and sorry that you had to sit through that. I watched it today and I, I, I'm a little off words kind of how that went. So uh, I, I do uh, commend you guys for having to sit through that. Um, Arbor Homes, uh, Addison Carlisle Road, north of Northwoods subdivision. Uh, we do have a concept plan from them. Uh, they will be coming in. We'll be having a special planning board meeting. It's not scheduled yet, but it will be prior to June's um, planning board meeting. Um, that way they will, uh, they'll probably present their preliminary plan in June. Uh, but they want to have kind of like a work session with planning board prior to that. Uh, DR Horton, we did meet with them last week. Um, they did have a concept, but it, due to uh, the floodplain um, studies that they did, that they're going to have to kind of revamp it because the floodplain is pretty heavy on that property, the Brewbreaker property, along 235. So uh, they'll kind of have to go back to the drawing board a little bit. But uh, was excited to see and hear from them. Uh, and then we have uh, we have another property um, was to be Twin Creeks. Um, what's that guy's name? Don Gilliam. Oh yeah, Don Gilliam. He owns that one. Uh, we don't have a developer yet. Uh, we do have some interest, so, uh, you know, details to come for that one. So we're excited about that one. Commercial development, we had one new business apply for occupancy at uh, 429 North Main Street. Farmhouse Charm, was she open yet? Opening the uh, 25th of May. Opens the 25th of May, so she is coming soon. Uh, it's going to be farmhouse, uh, 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 furniture, homey furniture, uh, rustic uh, home decor. Uh, so I'm excited for her, uh, a new business there. And we also had a uh, business relocation. Uh, I believe she was all, what was her all things skin? I think is what she was called. Uh, now she is Lunar Aesthetics LLC. She has her own location now on Main Street 106 South Main Street. Uh, she was kind of across the street in a multi-use building. Uh, so she's expanded and has her own location now, so we're excited for her. 
uh, economic development website. Um, I think Randy gave the, an update on that last time at last council meeting. Um, there is a website. It is designed, but our website guy was in the hospital, so he is recovering now. So as soon as he gets back up and going, we'll be able to link that to uh, to our city website and have that have that live. Chip program. Uh, some of the applicants have already been contacted and accepted into the programs. Uh, there's still many to come, so applications are still very, being reviewed. Um, but we have, I have gotten word back from some applicants that they've already been accepted and, you know, the process has started. So excited to see that on the way. Um, 2022 CDBG Community Development Allocation Grant. Um, we discussed this at our last meeting, uh, our, our last month's meeting, about uh, some monies that we have available through Clark County uh, and possibly a park program. Uh, after we did some preliminary estimates and study or some looks into this, it, just with the cost of asphalt and everything else, we're pretty limited what we could do. Uh, so we are going to be uh, submitting one for uh, a, a full basketball, a new full basketball court at New Carlisle Park. Um, still, it's a very expensive project, but uh, with the other projects that are being presented with the monies available to Clark County, we're a good applicant. So feel pretty positive about that. Uh, so that'd be a brand new uh, basketball court over there. Uh, then other planning department items, we're still looking for volunteers uh, to assist um, maintenance groups, repair groups, local groups that want to help out our community. Um, the local tool center, uh, lending center is up and operational and been busy the last two weeks. Uh, everyone getting out doing spring projects um, and board of zoning appeals still need members for that as well. But uh, that's all I have tonight. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments for Mr. Hutchins? <clears throat> All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you uh, Mr. Hutchinson. And moving on with the uh, city manager report, our finance report with finance director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, council, and members of the public. Our month of April, our revenue that we received was $691,820.94 for a total year to date of $3,253,701.98. The total expenditures for the month of April was 388,868 24, 27, I'm sorry. So it's $388,868.27. And total year-to-date expenditures are $2,620,544.65. <coughs> the rest of the sheet is the statement of cash. Our beginning for the uh, beginning of the year was six million fourteen thousand two hundred seventy eight dollars and forty seven cents we do have encumbrances those are payments that are pending but our ending balance is five million six hundred thirty five thousand three hundred ten dollars and thirteen cents all banks have been reconciled and the finance for the tax department for the month of April looks like we're still a little ahead for the year of Income tax for April was collected $158,953.45 for a total received of $586,733.03 and we're almost 8% above this time last year. Still anticipating collecting quite a bit. And that is my finance report and I'll entertain any questions. Council, any questions, comments? Move to accept financial report. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. Okay. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Accept at 7 0. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Harris Ms., uh, and Council. And moving on with our uh, city manager report, our service report with our service director, Mr. Howard Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council, members of the public. <coughs> we'll start off with the uh, Public Works Department. Street Department has begun dirt patching. We have a few streets uh, to finish up, and then we're going to go back over them. And they are well aware of the big pothole that's in uh, by New Carolina Federal, so it should be taken care of tomorrow, I believe. Um, amongst a few other roads that they got to get finished up. Uh, in the report, the ADA parking spots out here for Smith Park Shelter House has materials on order. Since I did the report to Mr. Bridge, the materials did come in. They got delivered, I think, Thursday or Friday. 
So we'll get that scheduled to get those uh, put down. Um, but as soon as they're done, or we kind of have an estimated time when they're completely done with dirt patching, we'll go ahead and get the Spring Street sweeping completed. And then under Water Department, the city pool work is just about completed. We do have some middle school um, festivities for the kids or this uh, Thursday and Friday. And then uh, we'll be ready to go with the uh, pool for the season. And then under Sewer Department, uh, nothing really that much to update. The clarifier is still being manufactured. We're still finishing up uh, specs and agreements. So um, again, that's a, a supply chain issue there with some of the things not being made uh, quickly like they used to be. 2022 road reconstruction. Obviously, we had suspended that for 2023. Um, we're getting ready to uh, work with ODOT, find out which of those ramps and curbs, that, uh, especially ramps that we need to get done and can get by not completing because they still uh, meet uh, today's standards. And then um, before I move down, the next one is Carlisle Park. The phase one upgrade project, as Derek has stated, I just want to add just a little bit to it. Um, we did add a swing on it and the cost is around 80000 just for the court stuff. Our, our grand plan is to add a parking lot, add sidewalk, make it, make it all ADA accessible. We were around 180,000. So the countywide um, amount that they get for CDBG was 240. So they actually fit us in with some street projects. So that was good for us. Uh, Nature Works grant, uh, there is a resolution in front of you tonight. This is to possibly go up to three open shelters and replace the concrete pad where the old uh, handball, um, uh, what else was out there? The handball wall. Racquetball court. court. Yes, yes, so that'll be redone and gazebo type shelters will be put out there. I think we were looking at uh, somewhere between 12 by 14s or maybe something a little bit bigger what will fit on there. The thing about Nature Works is there's $150,000 to go around countywide. So I'm gonna try and see what's feasible is two, gonna get three. Uh, three were estimated to be right around $50,000 uh, to do three of those shelters. Um, these will be solid wood. These aren't like your residential ones. These will be full blown um, two by six, or I'm sorry, six by six construction. So they're, you know, they're real nice. If for some reason something would happen down the road, these will be able to be moved, so. Um, with that being said, we did look at the ballpark for a CDBG. However, the gentleman from Troy that I think uh, you guys may have worked with, he's gonna meet with me before we put any kind of engineer on it, on the drainage and what can we do to update that park, refence it, do things like that, um, that can be maintained for the future. Uh, the big thing about drainage is it is the well field. So the more we actually divert directly to a spot can be uh, an issue. So we're gonna work on with this. So this guy's a one-man band, I guess, with his company. Yep. And when he's done with the spring baseball season, then he'll meet up with me and I'll report back to you guys on what some possibilities are for next year's CDBG. And of course, this Nature Works grant is for um, 2023. The CDBG is for 2023. And community cleanup, I have that uh, called Smith's Wrecking last week looking at uh, July 9th or July 16th, leaning towards July 16th. So he was open both days. We just wanted to make sure it was after the community-wide um, garage sale. So, and that is all I have um, for my report. <coughs> you said July 16th, right? Yes. Okay. Right. Council, any Mr. Cook. Anything on the uh, estimate for the repair work on the signs south end? I'll get to that later on. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? I just had one uh, follow up. Are you, Warren, are you all right? You sound wore out or sick or tired or something. All, all last week was allergies. I kind of worked in yeah. at home and here. Okay. And I think it, now it's the drainage. So, yeah. Gotcha. All right. Um, the, um, so you already got one of mine. Uh, did you, have you started the process of getting possible bids for the asphalt on the side of the fire station that we had discussed? I have not done that at this point. Okay, thank you. And that's all I had. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. And moving on to city management report under discussion topics. Uh, Mayor's courts, I know at the last meeting, Mayor, you, you had said you, uh, some sort of informational meeting for the public. 
So I'll let council kind of look at that and decide how you guys want to handle that. Um, but we are having our final meeting uh, May 23rd. Um, that's that, and that meeting we're going to have a hard start date. It is if it's if it's in my timing, it'd be the first second week in June. Um, if we have to get a little leeway for back ordered stuff, hopefully by the end of June. Um, but we are waiting on um, back ordered cameras for extra security. I'm not saying we're going to hold off the court start date for that, but we are experiencing some delay on some of those items being delivered. But again, I am happy to report we should have a hard start date here in a couple weeks. Um, and then probably at the first meeting in June, we'll, I'll ask you guys how you want to handle the informational side to the, to the public, mm -hmm. uh, if anything, at that point in time. But we are excited to get it going. Um, city Council retreat, I've kind of looked at this thing. I said at the last meeting, some people like will have it at the beginning of the year when a new council member is being set. That's a good idea. I think a better idea though is, uh, I, and most what I've seen, uh, for the research I've done is they'll have a one big shindig um, and they'll have all the boards there, like your planning board, your, be your board of zoning appeals, should it be sat fully, your parks and rec board. And the council will get with those individual boards and just kind of go over their bylaws and how they, you know, how they want to progress throughout that year. It's also a good time to look at your budget and your CIP, you know, kind of got everyone under one roof with that. So ideally, um, it's your guys' decision how you want to handle that. My recommendation is kind of doing it like that because that allows us to really get to the, the CIP which is our capital improvement plan and really hone with this budget. But more importantly, the Parks and Rec Board would be there to engage in those discussion as well. So really, if council's okay with that, think about it. I'll note it for the next meeting to kind of get direction from you guys. Just kind of think about it over the next couple of weeks, how you want to move forward. Um, and then two, the other thing, we have about $4,000 to work with. Do you want to do this somewhere close, like Aleron, or do you guys want to go out and grab a hotel with a conference room and have everyone under one roof that way? Decisions up to you. A lot of people do it both ways. Um, I think this year with the 4,000, maybe we just kind of keep it close and do a layer on. That way, if the public wants to come, they have easy access to it because it's really not that far away. But just think about how you're going to do that. And the next meeting, we'll definitely move forward in solidifying something for you. Um, work sessions in general and with planning board. So after the planning board meeting tomorrow, I don't know if council still want to sit down with that, with that, uh, but to have a work session with that planning board. But just thinking too, at the next meeting, I'm gonna ask council's opinion on this, on this too. Do we wanna go back to having maybe one work session a month while all these developments are coming in so we can all be on the same page? Um, think about that, how we wanna move forward, or we're we just gonna tie that into our regular council meetings. As these developments get closer and they, you know, the, the stuff starts happening, it'd be good to have at least maybe once a month so we're kinda of all on the same page. Ultimately, it's up to council, but at the next meeting, I'll ask you guys for uh, solid advice on that one as well. Arbor Homes development. So with this particular council packet, we did put uh, the residential development north of the elementary school. We have their final, um, I want to say final, but what they've given to us before we submit it to the planning board. I think I emailed this out to council, but we did want it to be part of the packet for the general public. This is the development north of the elementary school. It is in um, Bethel Township, correct me if I'm wrong, but Clark County. So we will need to annex, but not county, cross county lines on that one. We're excited about that one. They got, they got some good elevations on their house styles. Uh, so I have any discussion, and one is the special meeting with Bethel Township. I know we have five bullet points. I'm going to work with Jake on to develop in that annexation agreement. I think once we have that done, I'm going to present it to council so you guys can see that. It's ultimately going to be your decision if you want to go back and meet uh, with Bethel again in good faith, as we said we would. But we are going to at least get the uh, legislation drafted so you guys can start reviewing that. And then on the signs, too, that's a big endeavor. We have $40,000 to work with. I don't think we're going to be able to replace every one of our entryway signs. So, Council, what direction do you want us to go? Do you just want it to refurb the ones we have and just kind of repaint them and make the post a little bit better? Do we want to do a full-fledged redesign and replacement? If we have to do the, la the later option, we'll have to allocate some funds back into our budget from our reserves in order to do that. You know, I think maybe just for the sake of taxpayer money, we just do a good refurb on what we have and see how long it lasts. Um, ultimately, the decision's up to you guys. Um, if you guys want to wait to the next meeting to give us a direction on that, we can do that. If you guys want to make a motion on that now, we'll take that as well, too. Uh, my two cents, we can all chime in on i mean the one that's right there by hensley the big tall wooden one it's got the new glass line off to the side it's it's leaning pretty good i don't think that one needs replaced i mean my two cents i don't mind leaving that same style there i just think 
you know, with whoever we contact, come out and just give a look of what it would cost to refurbish it. Is that the big one that says Hensley Park with all the businesses on? Yeah, it's got like who them. owns that. That's my thing. Like, I've checked auditor site and there's no information available. Okay. But. But we've always maintained it. Maybe we'll do like a test paint, see if anyone comes out and complains. <laughs> <laughs> see what happens from there. No, yeah, the sure. city maintains the does the grass, and we built that little shelter there. So I would think the sign belongs to us. Fix the sign, make it look. I'll do a little bit of research. If we have to get permission, I'm sure they're not going to get upset if we refurb their sign. But I'm, what I'm getting is just we're going to do a simple re replacement, and I mean repaint yeah, because repaint. some of those logos up there, uh, it's going to be costly to take each one of those down and get repainted. Well, they're not painted. They're probably well, some of them might be. They're probably printed. So, Probably vinyl print. Okay. I didn't, I haven't been up close to them. I have no idea. Okay. So we're keeping it what it is and just getting it reprinted? Well, what, whatever the style is, I mean, or if there's any of those churches or whatever or those organizations are that are no longer in town, I think they're all still here, though. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just an overall rehaul. rehaul of the, is that something that you guys want to reach out to them to see if you want to be on it? And if they do, have them pay for that? I would. Because every, I mean, if we do that, or, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm just asking questions. Sir. If those signs was put up by the different organizations, they most likely paid for it. But I would like to, to know who, who bought them, who put them up. And if the organizations did it and they want a new sign, they can pay for it. And then the city will mount it, I would think. The, uh, but as far as the sign being painted, you know, scrape it, sandblast it, whatever and then repaint it in the same colors that, that it uh, currently is or the rest of the signs are, kind of make them uniform. And to potentially replace any rotted wood or well, any of the structures. Yeah, well, I didn't make that in the form of a motion, but I can. <laughs> uh, we'll just make that in the form of a motion. Any, like the mayor said, any rotted wood needs to be replaced. I mean, I think that's common sense uh, for most people. The uh, before you make a motion, do we want to uh, discuss like what, you know, because the one here at the end of the Smith Park sign has got off. Um, Smith sign, that, that was started last year, so that one's already in, in the works. Started by? The Studio 10. Did, did we get any quotes on those for different vendors? No, she pretty much does did our signs. So again, this was from last year we initiated it. Okay. Uh, I would also like to see quotes on the signs from a couple of three vendors or whoever to see what it would cost to do it. I mean, after all, we're spending taxpayer money, so we should be diligent in getting the best price. And that isn't always necessary, but it is necessary. <laughs> And we do a very good job at, at usually getting quotes, but usually I, we have a I know you do, and, uh, and I'm sure the mm -hmm. council and the citizens appreciate that. Uh, and even when you do get a good quote, it's been my experience that you, you even get them cheaper than what they tell you. <laughs> Cause, uh, I won't say that. I won't say why you get it. But <laughs> got it. The, uh, okay. so if you want all that into a motion. Well, let me ask you this real yes, quick. Sir. Do we want to, and I'm asking, do you want to, you know, the signs that are, are the worst. So you got, well, go ahead. I believe when those signs went up, the city paid for the backdrop, but each individual church, whatever, paid for the individual plaques mm -hmm. that then were put on that main board. Just churches? Well, the organizations, uh, rotaries, probably, that's, organization. that's, yeah. that's the nonprofits, yeah. maybe right. instead of private businesses, that makes yeah. sense. Right. Like okay. I think Rotary's on there too. That makes sense. So it's like service organizations. Well, yeah. I, yes, I think your service organizations at that time, Sir Toma, Rotary, etc., paid for all of that themselves. And those have been up there for years. Fifty years? Well, longer than I've been around. Oh, and then I'm <clears throat> close to 100? So what we could do is, I was thinking, we get 
we have uh, whatever you think's best to however many people you want to have come in and get different quotes on on refer I guess refurbishing is the, we'll say Re refurbish. So refurbish is the refurbish recondition whatever you want to call it on the main signs that are that are really bad the the one at Hensley um, are the ones on the four points of town yeah. need it yeah yeah we're gonna look them all yeah, okay yeah. those and and um, <coughs> has she started any work on this actual sign like, she ordered stuff last year for it yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it takes forever to get anything in. It's probably sitting in an ocean somewhere. She was blasting it last year. We were out helping her with the air compressor and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that one's the rest we can. So yeah. maybe make a motion to have the, the four signs plus the Hensley sign looked at for refurbishment. Re Go ahead. The signs, um, I'm not even sure I should bring it up, but. The signs that are done at the entrance with the sandblasted landscape. landscape. If we're just going to refurbish them, shouldn't it be done by the person who did them in the first place? Mm -hmm. I would. If, you're, if we're getting quotes, it's the lowest quote. Yeah. That's, that's how we got to do it. Yeah. That's unfortunate because he does great work. We would definitely have to, if we're getting quotes, we'll have to. Definitely use the, the cheapest and most qualified, so we'll see what we get. Okay. And I, th I think also, even with the quotes, uh, would would we have the final say on the quotes, or would the manager have the final say on the quotes? I would. Depending on the price. If it's under yeah. 20, then I would. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we have, you said, 40? Mm-hmm. I, I would like like not to spend forty thousand oh, yeah, dollars times, cool. but yeah. but the uh, you know the, the signs, in my opinion, and apparently rest of council and the manager needs to be fixed, replaced, not replaced, but re redone. Rotted wood needs to be fixed. If they're lean, they need to either be shored up somehow or dug up and moved two foot or something to oh. to get better better uh, sinkage or uh, support for them? Yeah, I'm sure the people who are, the people who are going to quote the refurbs are going to be signing people, so they'll okay. be able to look at all that. So, Mr. Vaughn? Um, yeah, I would just ask. The, those guys, you know, they're signed people. They do it every day. I would just yeah. say, hey, we're looking at redoing our signs. Is it better to refurb them or is it better to replace them? Yeah. Let them give their yeah because they may like if the that. sandblasted one are really expensive to redo the sandblasting is expensive <laughs> do we get rid of the sandblasting and just do it like a vinyl and not there the may be a new <laughs> material they're using yeah, that isn't be any that we don't know they they do this so they they're okay. kind of the experts there i got you i i'm i think i got it i don't need a motion i understand it just okay. refurbish you sure you don't need a motion nope, i got it i'm not confused i mean i, I want you to come back two weeks i didn't know what you want me to do we're good okay <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Questions, just call me. And, and the, if we move on with that, we're good. Um, upcoming legislature council review. It uh, doesn't change since the last time. Employees, generally boards, the commission handbook. I do want to do that. I've, I've got a little bit more of it done since last time we talked. Um, it's still a large document. Is this something you guys want me to wait till we have the retreat when everyone's there? Do you want me to keep on doing with what I got going and let you guys look at it as a whole document and mend it down? Hey, I'm still at a, I'm still at a loss with this one. You talking about the handbook? Yeah, for all your boards and commissions. That would probably be something I would think to, uh, as toss it out to council to do it at a retreat. Maybe we'd have a little more time to, to look at it and discuss it. But we don't want to have too much on the agenda for a retreat either. No. Anyway. But you never know what the same major will bring up to us, you know what I mean? Well, you might want to wait until that's done because if you, have your, if you talk to your boards during your, your retreat, it may impact your handbook. Right. See what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. Do we do the handbook after we have the retreat, just in case there's something we don't like, we can scratch out a paint, opposed to me sitting there doing all, then have to re take out what I just redid. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. So we'll just wait for the retreat then. Okay. <clears throat> Awesome. Again, do you need a motion for that? Nope, I'm good. I got it on record. Um, that is all I have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Mr. Bridge? Nope. Thank you, right. them all. Thank you sir. Thank you.
All right, and moving on, comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, uh, please go to the podium, your name and address, and <coughs> keep it to five minutes. Mr. Mayor, yes. can we switch the how we talk about it on the phone? Um, say it one more time. Can we switch the public com do legislation first before public comment? Yep. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we uh, yeah. break rules of council and do resolutions and ordinance before comments from members of the public. Okay. Second. Motion by Mr. Rodewall, second by Ms. Eggleston. And I'm requesting that just in case we got some staff members that have been here all day. So when we get the legislation, they can go enjoy their evening. And I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So we're voting on breaking rules of council to move comments of members of the public to below our legislation. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry? No. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That passes six to one. So now, let's move down here. We have our resolutions. We have resolution 2022 10R, a resolution authorizing the city manager to apply for a Nature Works grant through the Ohio Department of Natural Resources for the Municipal Pool Upgrade Project in the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Council. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Move to accept resolution 2022-10R. Second. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. And an explanation of this resolution, it is the first of two uh, to apply for the nature work grants. This was discussed during the uh, service director and planning directors, no, I'm sorry, service directors uh, manager report. Any discussion, Councilman? All right, when you're ready, please. All right, Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That passed to 7 0. Moving on, we have Ordinance 2022 15, an ordinance amending Chapter 1040 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding the city's water utility. So moved. Second. An explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this ordinance is due to a review of Chapter 1040 of the City uh, Codified uh, Ordinances regarding water. Basically, the changes we made were to uh, add or to correct any outline sequencing errors and to fix uh, any other mistakes. And also, it just makes it a more user-friendly chapter. Any discussion? Sir. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> my only uh, question with this is under section 1040.04, where it says, uh, Item B, where it says if a customer makes an appointment for service and or repairs and fails to be present uh, or arrange for a, a person over 18 years of age at, at the service address at scheduled date and time, the missed appointment fee will be $50, should be charged. <clears throat> I'm just wondering if we should have some verbiage in there if the city misses the appointment that the individual would get $50. $50 credit for not, I mean, things happen, but if, if the city <laughs> makes that appointment and misses that appointment, wouldn't it be right for the resident if, say, they had to take a half a day off of work or whatever to make the appointment, they come and then the city doesn't show up? Wouldn't that be... I guess uh, fair or put a little more responsibility on us to make sure we do what we say we're going to do. Oh, that's for your council to decide. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Sir. Uh, is uh, that in a form of a motion, sir? Is what in the form? What he just said? No, he's just asking a question. Oh. Yeah, I can make that in the form of a motion if you'd like. Whew. So that I'll would, clean that, it up for the motion. If you, you, you would just you would actually not make a motion. You would just admit, approve it or deny it with amendments. 
So you would okay. so you just motion, you would make a motion to approve with amending what you that section you just said. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You so you just want to amend that section to, to, to say to say that if the city does not make the appointment that the resident would be uh, compensated the fifty dollars for the missed appointment. Or would that be on his bill? Let's say, or you mean like credit? Yeah, credit, yeah, not credit, not yeah. an actual like here's yeah, a check. They wouldn't hand you a fifty dollar bill at the yeah. So I'm going to say that motion will be determined on us getting that final approval through our law director because we cannot credit a giveaway free water. Would this be a credit for free water? It's an enterprise fund. So that that would be my only hookup. That if it, if it's legal to have it go and run with that, but if it's not then we'll have to think of something else. We've How often does this even come up? I've never seen it and I review Springfield's tips when we're redoing stuff, I've never seen that. And is, no, how much is like, does it, do we have to make oh. appointments? Like how often do we make appointments there? Like for this Usually we're, thing? usually they're making the appointment with us and then if something comes up where they would get it on main break, we communicate that, but we've never not made an appointment in a day and then go, go oh, we missed one all day. So that'd just be the issue with the you know, the with that being an enterprise fund if we could do that. And that's that's all. We'd have to get it cleared. So it'd be well, stipulation. Like, I'd like us to check into that if that would be Oh for sure, for sure. Absolutely. It would be a good idea to give both parties a time frame, specified time frame to cancel the appointment. I mean that's that's for you guys to decide. Twenty four hours or something like that, twelve hours. How um, Sorry. I can tell you, we pretty much just, if someone cancels on us, we just move on to the next task. But where I don't know, I'm trying to think back, if we've ever had to cancel, we have enough people to, you know, get someone to go out there and do, do the task. And this is... Let me bring this up. If you're, if you're turning on service, they don't technically need to be there, do they? We require them. Okay. And, yeah, we don't do an either or where, um, I know some utilities like American Utility, if you're there, we turn it on, great. If you are not, you assume all responsibility for flooding. Um, we just don't even get into that. Good point, good point. Okay, so why don't we do this? Just a suggestion, because I think it's going to get complicated if we try to give a credit. Why don't we just take the fee away? Do I? Just take the fee away. Just get rid of the fee away. So you make That's an fine. appointment, we'll just, re we'll just make yeah. another appointment. Be done. Does that happen a lot on your end? It, it, it's, it's Minimum. I couldn't even tell you last time that uh, you my guys showed up and had to wait a half hour and no one ever showed up. Usually there's there's numbers to call. So you want to amend okay. it to say that? That, good. Yeah. that way we don't have to do all the legality and boom. And it very rare, if it was a repetitive thing, that's one thing, but since it rarely occurs. Okay. And let's I'm address fine. it when we have an issue. Council's fine. I'm fine with that. So the motion would be just to strike out the fee. Yep. Because it's going to be also listed in 1040, the waste, the sewer side of things too. Okay. And then what we'll have to do also is amend the subsequent ordinance that has that be listed, um, which would be 2216, because I do believe. And just FYI, we don't do two hour windows, four hour windows. We go right when the customer wants to do it at 2.30 too. So yeah, we don't do the Time Warner Spectrum uh, windows <laughs> or anything like yeah. that. No, we're, we're very responsive to their to their time frame. So Councilman Bob? Yeah, this was not an indictment on any yeah. thing no, not that all. you guys do. So. Mm -hmm. Don't take that. Very, very noble and observant of you. So when you get to ordinance 2216, we ask that you do the same motion. Go ahead and strike um, the missed appointment fee out of 1041.05. And that take care of the both of the water fees. I don't know where it's located in the sewer, but we'll I'll find it by the time you guys get there. Oh. Did you catch all that? So what was the motion you made? Yeah. Well, well, well no, it wasn't a motion, it was just a, well, an amendment. An amendment. Not a motion, an amendment. Three words already. I'll second his amendment. Mr. Red, make a motion okay. to uh, amend where the section 1040.04b strike that from the ordinance. That's to remove the fee, correct? Yep. 
That beast. Can I read it one more time without the fee before we go any further so I can see if it makes sense? That was if the customer makes an appointment. Sorry. Well, well, yeah, the, uh, the whole thing could just be done. Okay. While they're doing stuff, the manager's doing stuff. I will <coughs> let council know that I had a water leak one time at the main shutoff valve in my house and had to have a plumber fix it. I called the city and I said I need my water turn back, you know, yeah. like today, like two minutes ago. And they laughed and said, we'll be out there yeah, think within 30 minutes. And they did, because I, I had water running in the house. They come out and shut it off. And the plumber was there. He fixed it. As soon as he got it fixed, I called him. They come right back out and turned it on. It, it, they, they, they respond, in my opinion, fairly quick to, to citizens when they, when they have a water problem in their house. They'll come out and get that water turned off. Is that a motion? Yeah. A second. Uh, well, I, do. I can get it. So the, Did we, no. Did I make it the motion no. was to amend um, the section 1040B to remove the fee. Remove the fee. So we're voting on that amendment. Councilman Bond. Yes. Where Councilman Cook. No. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Yeah. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Where is it at? Councilman yeah. Roadwell. No. Okay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. All right. Three, four, five. That motion passes five to two. So now we will go ahead and vote on our ordinance 15. My first was Eggleston. Second was Lindsay. Yes. I believe so. Originally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. Councilman Rodold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. No, this is the uh, ordinance as amended. Correct. So the resolution is amended. Correct. Or ordinance, yes. yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passes 6 1. And then for 16, did you say that he can just. Do we need to vote on the amendment for 16 or when they make the. Motion, they can say as amended. As amended. Okay. Got it. We got that. Okay. Ordinance 2022 16, an ordinance amending Chapter 1043 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding the city's water and sewer rate structure. Second. With amendment. With amendment. Okay. The amendment is to remove the fee. Remove the missed appointment fee from 1041.05. 1041.05. Is for this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The first was Eggleston. The second was Lindsay. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. No. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That passes six to one. Moving on to Ordinance 2022-17, an ordinance amending Chapter 1041 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding sewer service charges. Does this one need? Mm -hmm. This one doesn't. Need it. Nope. Okay. Second. Second. Mr. Bond. Uh, this ordinance is due to the uh, overall numbering changes in the utility section of the code. So if you see like 1041, the change to 1042, 1043, the change to 1043, this is just to make that sequence make sense. So this is going from 1041 to 1042, if the section was repealed. 10-4. <laughs> Sorry. 10-8. <laughs> <Ten eight. laughs> all right. Okay, all right. Council, any questions, comments? Good. Yep. Councilman Cook? No. <coughs> Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman yes. Lindsay? Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. That passes six to one. Moving to Ordinance 2022-18, an ordinance amending Chapter 1042 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding sewer use regulations and user charge system. So moved. Second. With amendments. 
Does this one need you with the, okay, with the amendments? <clears throat> so first was. Lindsay? Okay. So yeah. the amendment. She seconded. I'm, I made the motion. Okay. She seconded. Uh, the amendments here would be to remove the return trip fee uh, mentioned in 1043.08. So it'd be remove 1043.08A3. Also, you're going to subsequently want to strike that out of your table of charges. So you're also going to strike Appendix A, G, return trip fee. Do you need an amendment motion for the other two that was added or just as amended? As amended is fine. Okay. You have that motion? Mm-hmm. All right. Any discussion? When you're ready. Okay. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Rodewald? No. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. <clears throat> that passes five two. Moving on to our last one, Ordinance 2022-20, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an amended contract with waste management for the curbside collection and disposal of residential garbage, refuse, and recyclables in the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. So moved. Second. Uh, this ordinance is a result of direction given by the city council to amend the current contract with waste management to increase recycling to every week and to address contract pricing due to inflation. Council, any discussion? Question. Mm -hmm. Was there any increase on going to the every week recycling from the previous amount? Yes, yeah, so effective June 1 should this pass, it would increase by $2.15. That includes the um, inflationary cost, but it also includes the increased cost to go to every week recycling. Ooh, the inflationary cost, I think, was 77 cents or 93 cents. Or something. Oh, sorry, it was 92 cents 90 something. Uh, per month, mm -hmm. and the total is what did you say? 215. And this only impact, it doesn't impact your seniors. So it's a dollar, like a dollar 15 for, for the. Uh, a month, for month. a month for the mm -hmm. additional recycling. And if you if you rent another recycling cart, which is like 11, 12 bucks a month, you can get rid of that, which is there mm -hmm. for savings. Yes. <laughs> so, not, what? so for we have citizens that rent two recycling carts, mm -hmm. like an additional, it's eleven dollars and eleven something some change to get the additional recycling cart that hopefully they'll be able to get rid of because we're doing every week instead of every other week. So mm -hmm. they're going to need one instead of two. Mm -hmm. This doesn't impact your seniors. Anyone in your senior rate program is not seeing an increase. They'll okay. see an increase in service, just not an increase. In yes, service. they'll get the benefits, but not the price increase. And this should help the pool issue. Yes. yes. I need to start using the neighbor's trash cans. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's in front of council tonight. Anything else? Okay. Please. Okay, Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. No. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passes five to two. Do you, oh, okay, now I'll do comments. Huh? I was gonna read additional bit, yeah, other no, business. So now we will um, we will move on. Uh, you Anyone find folks who are free please. to leave. Head out, you're more than welcome to leave for the evening. Okay. Thank you for your long day. Absolutely, please do. Just, uh, just a conversation while they're clearing out. So over the weekend, I was going out to my parents' house, driving by the pool, and we saw a truck dumping stuff into the dumpster at the pool again. So I pulled in there, found a deep, a deep fryer, a couple other things, but conveniently enough, there was a piece of mail right on top. Uh, it was inside or outside the city? Huh? Inside or outside? Outside, way outside. Way outside. Wrong, man. There's because there's no proof that the letter was part of the, you know. So, but anyways, I just thought it was interesting. But deep fryers are recyclable, apparently. Well, we to the metal, about, yes. <laughs> oh, April, your hot dog roller came in today. So. Would... Looks nice. Your hot dog what? Roller? roller. I had one. <coughs> oh. 
No, you... I've already used it. <laughs> we had a hot dog party. Oh, the roller or the steamer? The roller. The roller. Oh, you need a steamer. We have a steamer. Kids have a hard time with it. All right, moving on to questions from, questions, comments from the public. Please go to the podium, name, address, five minutes, the whole deal. Why does no one have anything? All right, nobody? Sounds like the only one. Just be popular. Uh, let's see, my name is Jeff Morford, 4720 Scarf Road, Miami County. <laughs> Just to start, I am still and will always be against the 300 house development DDC plans to put at Scarf and Lake because of habitat and environment issues for the Honey Creek Corridor. Next. Over the last number of weeks, we have all learned things about annexation, zoning, how politics work, how contracts work with contingencies, surveys, and referendums. At this time, I would like to go over some voting statistics. New Carlisle has three precincts. In November 6, 2018, there was 3,330 registered voters and six, 1,640 cast a ballot, approximately 50%. Not long ago, <clears throat> on May 3rd, 2022, primary election, there were 3323 three, three registered voters. 705 voted, approximately 21%. I'll refer back to these statistics shortly. <coughs> Over these weeks, Happily, I have learned that each of the city council members has been a resident of New Carlisle and surrounding community for a long time. Some a lifetime. Many grew up here, have parents, siblings, children, maybe even grandchildren living in the community. There is a potential of 1,000 new homes being built in New Carlisle which could equal 2,000 new voters. And two, four, six years from now, the residents of these homes will vote on the moral temperature of New Carlisle. They will vote on school decisions, such as school safety issues, curriculum, bathroom issues, and even possibly scrapping advanced classes in the name of equality. They will also be able to vote on planning and zoning issues growth issues, types of buildings, types of businesses, and industries that would be allowed in the new Carlisle. In my mind, these new residents slash voters can change the fiber of new Carlisle. You might be skeptical and brush this train of thought off and say this will never happen. I've learned in my years to never say never. I will be very uncomfortable if I attend one of these New Carlisle meetings some four, six, eight years from now and see no one on the council that has lived in the city more than four years, has no history with the city, no family ties with the city, no allegiance to the city, as I say, no skin in the game. Next. A referendum requires signatures from 10% of those who voted in the 2018 election. Back to the voting stats. 1,640 new Carlisle residents voted in 2018. 10% of that is 164 signatures, which is then filed and verified with the Clark County Board of Elections. And if all goes well, we put, it would be put on a ballot and voted on by the residents of New Carlisle. I can remember what they wanted Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes. Mr. Gilliam. <clears throat> I'm Don Gilliam. I live at 8140 East New Carlisle Road. That is in Bethel Township, Miami County. 
And uh, I've been trying to attend as many of these meetings as possible, but I travel a lot. So um, I haven't said a whole lot yet. Uh, I did at one planning meeting. I, uh, I own most of Twin Creeks. Uh, the only thing I don't own is 43 acres that is owned by uh, the land bank. And we're working together, and that will get developed. Um, we don't have a definite time frame, but that was originally annexed into the city, um, what, 15 years ago at least? <laughs> So that is in the city. Everything in Twin Creeks is in the city, already annexed. And uh, it took me 14 years to put all the pieces back together, and uh, it is now ready to develop. So that alone uh, could be 600 to 700 homes. And that plus uh, what uh, I think it's D.R. Horton now is working on uh, some of the Brubaker land, which is about 100. 40 some acres, um, and then you got a, a potential development just north of the school. Uh, those, just those three would be, could be over a thousand homes uh, without the land in Bethel Township. So I just want to make it clear I do live in Bethel Township, Miami County. I've lived in Bethel Township, uh, Miami County, and the city of New Corral all my life. Uh, first started uh, doing business when I was five years old getting my hair cut in town. So, uh, and, and we've had businesses here ever since. So I'm very supportive of New Corral. But I, I want to make it clear, I'm very much against annexation of land from Bethel Township in Miami County. Just I want to make sure my position is clear on that. But I'm very much in favor of New Corral growing, just not right there. <laughs> so that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, sir. Anyone else? I have to ask a question. Oh, Shelly Cookery, I live on New Carlisle Road, 8780 East New Carlisle Road. So he's talking about potential for buildings up to 600 homes that New Carlisle already has. Is there a builder? Is, is there any? Are you guys doing anything to? to develop that property that's already ready to be, that's already in New Carlisle that could have houses built on it? It's not our property. <laughs> it's not our job. Hmm. So how, do, how does that happen then? Just so I know, I mean, I don't, I mean, Don or, or, or <laughs> Derek, you want to run through it? I mean, it's... Well, when there's a potential developer, uh, they will meet with the city to discuss plans. I mean, we have met with developers for that particular land. We just haven't, signed. We haven't found the right developer yet goes to meet that wants to take it on. Take it on. So. Why do they not want to take it on? That, that I don't know. It could be cost. I mean, it, it's the larger out of the, the four that we potentially have. So it, it definitely... And then when... Well, I mean, there's details to every site that this requires more than just developing houses. It requires uh, a lot more. But it's, it will happen. It will happen. It's, they'll get it well. Could you speak up, please? Yeah, they'll get a developer for that, one, for that land. Uh, which one did you talk about? Twin, Twin Creeks. Creeks. Yeah. yeah, I don't understand why. If, we, if there's the potential that's already within New Carlisle to build, 600 houses, what, well, what's stopping it from happening? Because That's what I'm saying. There's, nothing, there's, there's nothing. It's just a potential, ma'am. It's nothing has been finalized. Yeah, I know. The Miami County one is just that. further along in the process. So they're going to actually submit stuff formally to the city well before Mr. Gilliam's parcel would. So we can't we can't just assume that Mr. Gilliam's going to come through his or We can't assume. We can't, we can't plan. Or we don't plan for money or things we don't have. It's just a potential. This could happen. He's got a large area to develop. That's going to take some developers with some pretty deep pockets to do what he's wanting to do in the grand scheme of things. So we're focused on what's it's the timing. It really is the timing. Let's just say that Mr. Gilliam was, you know, a couple months in, in front of the Miami County one. He'd be more likely getting ready to go in front of the planning board. 
for that first review of that preliminary plat. Well, that's what DDC is doing in for the Miami County one tomorrow. They're just well advanced, well farther in advance of the game than most people. So that's where we're at. We we just can't like as normally you would. We don't we don't bank, we don't bank on money we don't have. We don't plan for things that yeah. we don't have. So it's the same situation here. Instead of money, it's just land and development. So we kind of got to take what's coming to us at that current time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? All righty, moving on to other business, Ms. Burner. Yes. All right, we have the city building will be closed Monday, May 30th to observe Memorial Day. The city offices will be closed June 20th to observe Juneteenth. Um, there will be a council meeting on Tuesday, June 21st. The council pizza and public will take place on Saturday, June 18th at the farmer's market. This will start at 10 a.m. The community-wide garage sale will take place the weekend of June 25th and 26th. And any other open discussion for city-related matters? Council, thank you. Council, questions, comments, all the above? All right. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Vice Mayor for adjournment. All right. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grant? Yes. A motion to adjourn is accepted. Seven. Pleasant evening. Oh,